memory of the 2019-20 summer bushfires is still ever-present for many of us. There is deep grief at the devastating impact on the East Coast environment, with millions of hectares of bushland burnt and native habitat destroyed. Almost three billion mammals, reptiles, birds and frogs perished. This experience has highlighted the reality of climate change and called for a re-evaluation of how we treat the habitat that remains. Western Port woodlands are important to protect because they're all that's left in this area. It's a very cleared area. Um, it's a bioregion, the Gippsland Plain bioregion, and it's one of the most cleared bioregions in the state. And Victoria is the most cleared state in Australia, and this is one of the most cleared areas in that state. So plants and animals and fungi that have survived to this point through colonisation like they're holding on in that little strip of vegetation. The landscape around Western Port bioregion is highly fragmented, with little native vegetation remaining. The remnant vegetation occurs in patches, surrounded by extensive land clearing for agricultural and extractive industries. The movement of native animals is severely compromised. Every time we fragment and, and cut up and sever, that green wedge of, of, of bushland, it stops species from moving and species like the southern brown bandicoots that are in the area, all the fungi, even the plants get affected. Their genes get stuck in one area and they can't move. There's a big mine or a new road or something put through. The genes can't move and, and the animals can't physically move and the genetic information of the plants can't move. They become inbred and that's the, that resilience in the ecosystem erodes, erodes, erodes. Western Port is recognised as a region of high ecological significance, supporting diverse flora and fauna, many of which are threatened and endangered. What happens under the ground is just as important as what happens above. In these coastal woodlands, there is a delicate symbiotic relationship between native orchids and fungi. They and other species play an important role in sustaining a healthy biosphere. Well, I think that disturbing the soil is what disturbs me most about the sand mining issues. It's really the foundation for life in the whole uh, forest area is what's, what's happening in the soil and it's the interactions between all the microbes in soil and the plants that are supported by the soil which interests me. The same orchids come up in the same patch every year at the same time and the reason for that is that there's this incredibly tight sort of ecology, uh, underground ecology involving microbes interacting with the roots or the tubers of orchids. Each orchid has its own preferred uh, fungus that uh, supports the orchids. So there's an incredibly interesting relationship between the type of fungus that's underground and why they're there. Uh, the fungus depends not only on orchids but the other plants around them. And so for me disturbing that is, 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 is an absolute disaster from the point of view of the health of, of the um, orchids and also the forest around them. And I think orchids are a litmus test for the health of the environment. The situation is set to deteriorate even further. Land clearing and the loss of habitat will occur with the proposed expansion of the current sand mining leases. 
This presents significant risks to both native flora and fauna species. Those at risk are the native orchids, the finger fungus, found in only three other sites on the planet, native grass trees, the endangered southern brown bandicoot, long-nosed bandicoot, lace monitor, powerful owl, swift parrot, and the growling grass frog. Already the leadbeater possum, helmeted honey eater, and the lyrebirds have gone from this area. And a lot of these plants and animals that are in the Western Port woodland, they're from that area. They've, they've evolved in this land. They found nowhere else on earth. So when you're wiping a species like that out, like what, what you lose, you, you'll never know. And you, and you don't know what you've got till it's gone. And extinction is a very, it's a big thing that most people never really grasp. Bringing threatened species back from extinction is costly and there have been limited success in restoring lost habitat and recreating healthy biospheres. It's frightening to think of the cost of trying to keep, let's say, the lace monitors alive uh, or the other uh, birds that are um, integral to that area because we couldn't afford it. What can we continue to afford? Is it the remnant vegetation or is it keeping one species with so many people looking after that one species and still not being able to assure its constant long-term survival? Sand mining practices already pose recognised risks for the Western Port environment. Toxic chemicals used in cleaning the sand leach into the water table, impacting bird life and fish species and polluting the environment. There are several chemicals that are used to, to cause uh, particulate matter to sediment. And these chemicals include two known um, uh, nasty chemicals which are internationally um, highly regulated in terms of potential to be released into the environment. Both these chemicals are known to break down into highly uh, toxic uh, small molecules which are, are mutagenic and that basically means they compromise the genes of any organisms that they come in contact with over a period of time. Acrylamide and the other compound DADMAC also are directly toxic to fish for example. So both binds to the gills of fish and suffocates them basically. The concern about the dredge pond at Grantville is that it's a, a very large pond and the water in the pond is directly in contact with sand and carry anything that's in, dissolved in the water into the groundwater. So that groundwater can enter the Western Port Bay uh, either via the creeks or through the um, groundwater that goes underground up into the mudflats. Equivalent of above ground issues in ecology apply equally well to the ecology within mudflats. You've got this highly organised architecture of organisms that live off each other and, and the whole life of Western Port Bay depends on what's happening in mudflats. The scary th prospect of having several sand mines with these types of washing operations all along the bay it could have disastrous consequences in the long term. The reason why Western Port Bay is a Ramsar site is because of the health of the mudflats and that supports the life all the way up to all the nice birds that we love looking at. And so any, anything that threatens the health of the mudflats threatens uh, the survival of those wetlands. And um, internationally, wetland attrition is a major, major problem. Future extraction works, both approved and those under application, will impose significant stress on the woodland reserves. Sand mining represents one of the single greatest threats to this network of remnant coastal woodlands. This is not a call to ban sand mining. Alternative sites have been identified. They are close to the city and more importantly, are not situated near precious remnant bushland. Monetarily, there's probably a lot of money worth of sand under that area, but it's very quick, like it's a quick exchange and you've got your piece of concrete or wherever the sand's gone to, but that woodland is worth more than any amount of money could ever, like you can't recreate 
the natural remnant vegetation that's there, the relationship with the fungi and the orchids up to the native grasses and the, the trees and the existing habitat already there, the big hollow bearing trees that the powerful owls live in, the best re-vegger um, bushland natural resource manager in the world couldn't recreate natural remnant vegetation. The experiences of the summer of 2019-20 remind us that there are values other than economic which need to be taken into consideration when imagining our future. We absolutely have to have a mind for the future. We cannot go about thinking about this is okay for today. We have to look at the alternatives that will protect uh, as much as we have of our native vegetation. There's more and more encroachment and it, we have to call a stop now and really say, what are the values of this woodland? What is it keeping alive? What is it doing? What is this area doing? We cannot have any more encroachment of it. Thank you.